today I will show you how to build a Drupal website for development purposes. We will be using DDEV, which is an open source tool to build local PHP development environments. The only requirements for getting started with DDEV is to first install Docker, which is a platform for developers and sysadmins to build, run, and share applications with containers. Once Docker is installed, you need to install DDEV. There are a lot of resources for you to install both these applications, and you can find all the details at the devs doc site you see here. We will build a composer based Drupal site. This means we will be using composer for managing all Drupal dependencies, such as modules, draws, and others. Starting with Drupal 8.8, .8, Drupal core uses composer project templates, which are part of Drupal core and they are the recommended approach for building composer based Drupal sites. So let's start. We will actually use DDEV's Drupal 8 Quick Start straight from uh, their docs. It's a pretty straightforward approach, which includes these steps shown here. So we'll follow each of those steps. First, to be sure, we need to make sure that Docker is up and running. So ensure that that is the case before you can start. Now we will create a new folder anywhere on your computer. Typically, I create my Docker-based websites in my sites Docker folder, but you can create that anywhere you want. I will call this folder my Drupal 8 site. Then I will cd into that folder by typing cd my Drupal 8 site. Next, we are going to run ddev configuration to define the type of project that we are creating. Here we are setting the project as a Drupal 8 type project in which ddev will create a web folder for Drupal to be set up in. In previous composer templates, the doc root was directly in the root of the project. With the new composer templates, we can set up a web folder for Drupal's doc root. Now I'm going to run ddev start to build uh, the database and web containers. These containers need to be ready before we can install Drupal. And as you can see, ddev created a settings.php and a settings.ddev.php file, which you can use to override any configuration coming from settings.php. This way you can keep your settings.php private and protected while you're still able to share any custom configurations through the settings that ddev.php with your team. Now it's time to install Drupal. This is where we use the composer template uh, in which we define the latest available Drupal 8 version at this point in time. Typically, you will run this on an empty folder, but since there is content already in our folder, we are asked if we want to override that content. Let's accept the default of yes by pressing return. This will begin to download Drupal core as well as any dependencies. This process can take a while, but I've speed up the process to spare you some of the weight. One thing about this approach is that if we create a repository of our project, we will not be committing any of the code base we download, like Drupal core or modules. And instead, we will only commit composer.json, uh, and this will make our project a lot smaller. Something that I really like about this composer template is that at the end uh, of the process, after it downloaded Drupal, it gives you next steps uh, so that you can have some guidance or direction on what you can do next with your Drupal site. That's pretty neat. Now that Drupal is downloaded, let's download Drush. At the beginning, I said that the only things that users need to do to install their local machine is to install Docker and DDEV. This means that we don't need to install Drush or Composer in our local machine. We will install and run those from the containers. Now let's install Drupal by running ddev launch. Uh, this will launch our application so we can complete the Drupal installation. You will notice the database configuration screen is skipped and that is because ddev created settings.ddev.php file which is where all the data configuration is already stored. There you have it, a new Drupal A site up and running. Now that Drupal is ready, let's add a couple modules that we will eventually use when we start working with Drupal tasks. But first, let's see how you can run Drush commands in a Docker container. To ensure Drush runs on the container and not the host machine, we need to prefix each Drush command with ddev exec. And to make it even easier, we can even do ddev dot and then the Drush command. We'll do a little more Drush commands shortly. For now, let's uh, use Composer to download the Devel and Admin Toolbar modules. This also is prefixed with ddev to ensure that Composer runs on the container and not the host machine. 
By the way, you can still run Drush commands uh, on your host machine if that is something you prefer to do if you have Drush set up locally. The advantage of using DDEV is that you don't have to have Drush or Composer installed on your host machine. Now let's clear our command line screen and enable the new modules uh, using Drush. Then we're going to clear Drupal's cache to ensure that everything is working fine. If we go back to our Drupal site and I hover over the admin toolbar, you can see there's some drop downs uh, and that tells us that those are coming from the admin toolbar module that we just installed. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. In future videos, we will make use of our new Drupal site to work on Drupal related tasks like theming and development. Thanks.